Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Testing Transformers with Rodian Schwartz LCX. In this presentation, we'll explain the most common types of tests performed on transformers used in electronics applications, and we'll show how to make these measurements using the Rodian Schwartz LCX series LCR meter. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with the LCX, and how to use the LCX to perform impedance measurements. If you're not already familiar with the LCX, we recommend that you watch the presentation getting started with the Rodian Schwartz LCX before beginning this presentation. The presentation Understanding Transformer Testing might also be helpful, but we'll review that information in this presentation as well. There are six basic steps in using the LCX to test transformers. These are connecting the test fixture and the device under test, selecting transformer test mode, configuring the test signal frequency and level, performing corrections, selecting the measurement type, and reviewing the results. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to configure and perform each of these steps. Transformer testing requires the use of the LCX Z5 transformer test fixture, which consists of both the fixture itself and a set of BNC to alligator clip leads. These leads are then used to connect to one or both sides of the transformer under test, depending on the measurement type. When connecting to both the primary and secondary of a transformer, the BNC connectors on the outside are connected to the side with a greater number of windings, and the BNC connectors in the middle are connected to the side with the lower number of windings. In this presentation, however, we'll provide a detailed connection diagram for each of the different transformer measurement types. The next step is choosing the transformer test function using the hard key on the front of the LCX. We then need to configure both the frequency and the level of the input signal. These values can be entered in the main GUI of the LCX. If necessary, range can also be used to set the expected measurement range, although in most cases, this can be safely left in the Auto mode. As we go through the tests in the remainder of this presentation, we will assume that frequency, level, and range have already been configured appropriately for the transformer under test. Before making measurements, it's a good idea to perform both open and short corrections in order to reduce the influence of the measurement fixture. When performing corrections, the leads with the red clips should be connected to the outer BNC connectors, and the leads with the black clips should be connected to the inner BNC connectors as shown here. To start corrections, press the COMP hard key and then choose the correction type. Note that in a short correction, the red clips are shorted together and the black clips are shorted together, whereas in an open correction, the red clips are open, and only the black clips are shorted. Now that we've gone over corrections, next we'll show how to use the LCX to make five common transformer measurements, namely turns ratio, mutual inductance, phase angle, primary and or secondary inductance, and leakage inductance. Note that the first three of these measurements require simultaneous connections to both transformer windings, whereas for the last two, Measurements are made only on one winding at a time. Turns ratio is the most fundamental transformer measurement because it defines the voltage transformation ratio. The voltage transformation in a transformer is proportional to the number of turns on the primary winding, NP, to the number of turns on the secondary winding, NS. In other words, the turns ratio, N, is simply NP over NS. For example, a transformer with a turns ratio of 10 has 10 times as many windings on the primary as on the secondary. This transformer would therefore step down a 120 volt AC input on the primary to a 12 volt AC output on the secondary. As mentioned earlier, turns ratio requires simultaneous connections to both windings. The outer common and end connectors are attached to the side with the higher number of windings, and the inner connectors are attached to the side with the lower number of windings. After selecting the parameter pair n, theta, and d, the LCX will automatically measure and display the turns ratio n. Here, the measured turns ratio is approximately 4.56. Mutual inductance, commonly abbreviated M, is the basis of transformer operation and refers to the fact that current flowing in one winding creates a magnetic field, or flux, that then induces a voltage in the other winding. The mutual inductance of a transformer is a function of the construction and the orientation of the windings. For example, 
parallel windings have a higher mutual inductance than perpendicular windings. Another example is that mutual inductance increases with increasing core permeability. A high mutual inductance is usually desirable because it represents a more efficient coupling of flux between the two windings. The L6 calculates the mutual inductance for measurements of both voltage and current made while simultaneously attached to both the primary and the secondary. The results of this measurement are given in units of Henry's. Since mutual inductance requires measurements at both windings simultaneously, our test setup is the same as before, with the LCXZ5 connected to both sides of the transformer. In this case, we select M theta MD from the available measurements. The LCX generates the appropriate test signals and computes the mutual inductance, here approximately 571 millihenries, using the measured values of voltage and current. Phase angle is related to the fact that transformers have polarity in the sense that the input and output voltage will have the same sign at the same time on leads that have the same polarity. In some cases, transformers will have markings in the form of dots, etc., to show which leads have the same polarity. In an ideal case, there would be zero phase shift or zero phase angle between signals with the same polarity. In real transformers, however, there's usually a phase angle on the order of at least a few degrees. Note, however, that this phase angle may vary with frequency, sometimes substantially. We measure phase angle by simultaneously connecting to both the primary and secondary windings. One final note. If you measure a phase angle of approximately plus or minus 180 degrees, this is usually a polarity mismatch between the primary and secondary, in which case it's a good idea to check the connections between the fixture and the transformer. Like the two previous measurements, measuring phase shift also requires attachments to both windings simultaneously. After connecting, choose a measurement type that includes the theta parameter. Note that the small d means the phase angle is shown in degrees. In most cases, phase angle will be on the order of single digit degrees. And as mentioned a moment ago, if you get a result close to plus or minus 180 degrees, this usually means that the leads have been attached backwards on one of the windings. Another common transformer measurement is determining the individual inductance of the primary and or secondary winding. The inductance of each winding can easily be measured separately. For primary inductance, we connect to the primary and measure with the secondary open. And for secondary inductance, we measure at the secondary with the primary open. It should be noted that measurements of primary or secondary inductance unavoidably include something called leakage inductance, an important topic which we'll cover in detail later in this presentation. The inductance of a single transformer coil can be measured by the LCX in the same way as a traditional single inductor. But in this presentation, we'll show how to make this measurement using only the LCX Z5 transformer test fixture. In this case, we connect both the 1 and N leads to one side of the primary transformer winding and the two common leads to the other side of the primary winding. We then choose the measurement M and the inductance of the primary winding, here 1.3 Henry's, is displayed on the LCX. To measure the inductance of the secondary, we would simply move the leads to the other side of the transformer. Next, let's cover leakage inductance. In an ideal transformer, all of the magnetic flux created by current in the primary winding would be coupled to the secondary winding. In this case, the transformer would be essentially lossless with no wasted energy or flux that doesn't get coupled to the secondary. The voltage in the secondary would therefore be entirely a function of the primary voltage and the number of turns in each winding. In real world transformers, however, some of the magnetic flux doesn't couple between the primary and secondary windings. This non-coupled inductance is sometimes represented as an additional inductor in series, but keep in mind this is not an actual physical component. This additional inductance is called the leakage inductance because it represents the part of the flux that leaks out of the transformer and is not coupled between the windings. Leakage inductance is an important consideration in many applications, such as in the design of power supplies, lighting ballasts, audio transformers, etc. In many cases, the goal is to minimize leakage inductance through careful construction of the cores and windings, 
but there are some cases where it's useful to have a leakage inductance with a certain range of values. We mentioned earlier that when we measure the primary inductance, this unavoidably also includes the leakage inductance. Remember that this leakage inductance is not a separate physical inductor that we could somehow connect to and measure separately. So how do we measure leakage inductance? If we short the secondary winding, this causes zero voltage drop across a secondary. Due to the nature of transformers, zero volts across a secondary also causes zero volts across the primary. This means that we can measure leakage inductance by shorting the secondary and then measuring inductance on the primary. Since shorting the secondary winding causes both LP and LS to be zero, the inductance measured on the primary side is now only the leakage inductance. Now let's measure the leakage inductance of our transformer. The connections are the same as for measuring primary inductance, but in this case, we need to short the secondary winding as just discussed. We then select M as the measurement type, and here we have a leakage inductance of 43.6 millihenries. This means that of the 1.3 henries of primary inductance we measured earlier, only about 3% is leakage inductance. Let's end with a brief summary. In addition to standard L, C, and R measurements, the Rodian Schwartz LCX can also be used to make a variety of transformer measurements over a wide range of frequencies and voltage levels. Connections to the transformer are made using the LCX Z5 transformer test fixture. The most important transformer measurements that we covered in this presentation were turns ratio, mutual inductance, phase angle, primary and or secondary inductance, and leakage inductance. Note that in addition to these measurements, the LCX also supports other transformer related measurements, so please see the documentation for more details on these additional measurement types. This concludes our presentation, Testing Transformers with the Rodian Schwartz LCX. If you're interested in learning more about LCR meters, transformer testing, or related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.